In today's video, we're counting down the top 10 comics to invest in before it's too late for the fall of 2020. Let's go. If we're just meeting, my name is Drew Stewart and I am the owner of Como Comic Books, a comic book vendor based out of Columbia, Missouri. And on our YouTube channel, we focus on bringing you the best tips and tricks to help you take your comic collection to the next level. We're now into the fall of 2020, and what a year. Despite the craziness the year has brought, the comic book market has remained vibrant, and we've had no shortage of books coming into the spotlight despite the pandemic and its impact to the convention scene. Today, we're sharing with you 10 books we're excited about in the current comic book market. These are books that may be in the process of heating up, books that are already starting to catch fire, and even a couple of books we're considering as future spec books. Let's go ahead and get into the list, but be sure to stick around to the end of the video where I'm going to share my number one piece of advice for collectors and investors in today's market. And the number 10 spot is Sandman number eight. Published in August of 1989, this issue features the first appearance of Death, in a story titled The Sound of Her Wings. Written by Neil Gaiman with pencils from Mike Dringenberg, this is one of the best individual comic issues ever written. Death is a key figure among the endless and is sure to draw new fans once she makes her appearance in the upcoming Sandman project that's coming to Netflix. Currently, a near mint copy of Sandman number eight will run you around $100 with a 9.8 copy running right around 500. Coming in at number nine is Raphael number one. All things Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles are incredibly hot right now, especially the turtles earliest appearances in the Mirage comic book series. The price of TMNT one first print has always been high due to the strong demand for the book and its low print run, but prices have significantly increased with seven of the last nine sales exceeding $10,000 across a variety of grades. With these high prices, collectors and fans of the Turtles may start to turn to other TMNT related keys. And one of the first issues that comes to mind when you think about other TMNT keys is Raphael number one. This one shot published in 1985 features the first appearance of Casey Jones, who is one of the Turtles most fan favorite supporting characters. Additionally, this is a very early appearance of the Turtles overall. Written by Peter Laird with art from Kevin Eastman, any TMNT fans collection is incomplete without a copy of this book and if it follows the same course as other early TMNT appearances, TMNT 1, 2, 3, 4, this issue may be on the verge of a swift bump in value. Currently, a high-grade raw copy will run you around $200 with a recent 9.8 sale reaching an all-time high of $2,200. The number eight comic book to invest in before it's too late is G.I. Joe number 21. Published in March of 1984, this silent issue features the first appearance of the classic G.I. Joe villain, Storm Shadow. Written by Larry Hama with art from Hama and Steve Lea Loha, this issue went through multiple printings. Currently, a high grade raw copy will run you north of $125, while a recent CGC 9.8 sale came in at a 2020 high price of $2,600. Demand for this issue is on the rise and the price is increasing accordingly, so be sure to get yours before it's too late. At the number seven spot, we have Primer number two. Primer two is the first appearance of Grindel. Primer was an early anthology series from publisher Kamiko and features a 10 page story in its second issue from a young creator named Matt Wagner. Tasked with the cover art, script, and story art for the Grindel story, Wagner introduces his assassin protagonist Grindel, the secret identity of Hunter Rose, and Grindel's nemesis Argent the Wolf also makes his first appearance in this issue. 
Grindel seems like a character that could easily be picked up by a studio for development. Published in 1982, the story is edgy and violent with a noir flair that could prove appealing to an audience that is constantly on the lookout for the next comic book intellectual property to obsess over. Currently, a high-grade raw copy is going to run you in the neighborhood of $350, and the last sale for a CGC 9.8 graded copy came in at $3,200, and this was back in May of 2020. Generally trending up in value across all CGC grades, these modest gains could sharply increase if Grendel begins to earn the attention of one of the streaming or television studios. For now, Primer 2 remains an attainable first appearance from the early 80s black and white independent comic scene. In the number six spot is Fantasy Quarterly number one, the first appearance of ElfQuest. Created by Richard and Wendy Penny, Fantasy Quarterly No. 1 was published in the spring of 1978. Bouncing back and forth between being self-published, reprinted by Marvel, back to self-publishing, then with later series published from DC and Dark Horse, ElfQuest is fondly remembered by most people who remember reading it. I rarely hear anyone say an unkind word about it that actually grew up with the property. ElfQuest emerged in the early days of the black and white independent comics wave that swept over the hobby in the late 70s and into the 80s. Fantasy Quarterly No. 1 is a book that is on our list of long-term holds with a current price tag of $100 for a high-grade raw copy. At $100, it is one of the more affordable books on the list, and much like Grindel, ElfQuest is an intellectual property that is just waiting to be revived for the new millennium. Last sale on a CGC 9.8 came in at $710 in September of 2020. However, 9.2 to 9.6 copies can be had for $150 to $250. That makes this an extremely budget-friendly spec book. I want to take a quick second and give a shout out to a couple of our viewers who took the time to leave a comment on our last video. Many thanks to the Grown Up Gamer and the Answer 27 for commenting on our Overstreet Comic Book Price Guide Turns 50 video. If you haven't had a chance to check out that video, I will link to it in the cards. And if you would like to see your own comment featured in one of our future videos, please be sure to leave a comment on this video or any of our previous uploads. Now, let's dive into the top five. The first book on the top half of our list, coming in at number five, is Demon Number One. This is a Jack Kirby classic from August of 1972 and features the first appearance of Etrigan, the Demon, with J.J. Abrams' Justice League Dark Project and development on HBO Max. Etrigan, who has a long history with Justice League Dark, is likely to pop up sooner or later. If Doorway to Nightmare Number 1, the first appearance of Madame Xanadu, is the forgotten key of Justice League Dark, then Demon Number 1 is the key that is hiding in plain sight. Plenty of attention has been paid to Kirby's fourth world works in recent years, yet Demon Number 1 has managed to remain modest in price over the same period. With a high-grade raw copy coming in at just $200, it's been nearly a year since the market has seen a sale of a 9.8 copy. In November of 2019, a 9.8 copy sold for $4,263. A 9.6 copy sold in August 2020 for $775, which was a great deal for the buyer as the sales price is a drop of 25% from the 2018 average price. That means now may be a great time to get into the demon number one. And the number four spot is a book that was previously earning a lot of attention, but in the wake of the death of Chadwick Boseman has erupted in speculation driven demand. Black Panther volume three, number two, the first appearance of Shuri. As recent as May, 2020, this May 2005 issue in 9.8 was routinely selling for under $200. With a low price of $118 in a March 15th sale. 
Immediately following the death of Chadwick Boseman on August 28th, demand for Black Panther 2 absolutely took off. Six CGC 9-point sales were reported on August 28th for sales prices ranging from $255 to $475. The following day, the price spiked up to $800. Currently averaging $530 for a 9.8 copy, high-grade raw copies are hovering around the $200 mark. Other issues seeing an increase in interest are Black Panther Volume 4 Number 1, the first cover appearance of Shuri as the Black Panther, and Black Panther Volume 4 Number 5, the first appearance of Shuri as the Black Panther in story. These issues can be had for at or just under $100, but Black Panther Volume 3 Number 2 is by far the key to invest in before it's too late if you want to speculate on Shuri as the Black Panther. The Spider-Verse remains a hotbed for speculators, and while books like Edge of Spider-Verse Number 2 or Ultimate Fallout Number 4 may have priced themselves out of the budgets of some collectors, there are still plenty of books that are affordable and full of potential. Most notably of those is Amazing Spider-Man Volume 3 Number 4, the first appearance of Silk, which comes in at the number three spot on our list of comics to invest in before it's too late for the fall of 2020. Variety has recently reported that a live action Silk production is being negotiated, which has piqued interest in this issue, which was published in September of 2014. Currently, a high grade raw copy of this issue will run you around $130. CGC 9.8 copies are currently averaging $276. Though a word of warning, 9.9 .9 and 10.0 graded copies of this issue do exist. Also noteworthy is the 1 to 10 Humberto Ramos ratio variant with high grade raw copies approaching the $400 mark. If you're looking to niche down and limit the focus of your collection or investment, the Spider-Verse is where I would recommend you direct that attention. In the runner-up position, number two on the list is She-Hulk number one. We've been talking about this book for a long time and it's been a book I've personally been speculating on for over five years, buying and selling dozens of copies in that time. The Disney Plus show is starting to get into production and recent updates and news related to the show has reinvigorated interest in this character. Up significantly in value over the last few years, there's still plenty of potential for growth in this issue as the show draws nearer and depending on the popularity or positivity the show is greeted by after it's released. Published in February of 1980, this Stanley scripted, John Buscema and Chick Stone illustrated issue features the first appearance of lawyer Jennifer Walters, the cousin of Bruce Banner, who becomes the She-Hulk following a blood transfusion from her gamma ray infused cousin. Climbing past the $200 mark for a high grade raw copy, this issue is currently averaging more than $550 in CGC 9.8 grades. For reference, the 2018 average sale for a 9.8 was $288. This is an issue I would act on sooner rather than later as prices tend to peak just before the release of the associated shows or movies. Topping the list of comic books to invest in before it's too late, Fall 2020 edition is Avengers number eight. This is the first appearance of Kang the Conqueror. This book has been my personal favorite Silver Age spec book since the end of the Infinity Saga in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. A Stan Lee and Jack Kirby classic, this September 1964 issue has been on the speculation radar of many collectors and investors since the concept of time travel first began to come into the MCU. With the recent casting rumor of Jonathan Majors of Lovecraft Country fame being cast as Kang the Conqueror for Ant-Man 3, that speculative hunch appears to have become a reality. The community has quickly churned through the pre-casting news inventory and sales prices are up nearly universally. A CGC 6.0 sold in September of 2020 for $1,000, more than doubling the 2019 average sale price in this grade. While higher grade copies are trending higher in value, 
No copy graded higher than a 9.0 has sold since the casting rumor was released. Low and mid-grade copies are seeing the greatest gains thus far. If you're looking to invest in the presumed future of the MCU, this book is our best guess to date. Is Avengers 8 going to be the Iron Man 55 of the 2020s? We'll have to wait and see. With values of Silver Age and Bronze Age keys beginning to price themselves out of the budgets of some collectors, those collectors are beginning to shift their concentration to copper and modern age keys. While certain properties like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles benefit from multi-generational fan bases, other properties are starting to move into the nostalgia sweet spot. This is a period where people who grew up with a property are now financially established and begin to act on the nostalgia they feel for items they associate with their youth. As promised, here is my current best piece of advice for collectors and investors. Now is the time to buy copper and modern age keys. Between nostalgia and the significant increases in value for older comics, now is the time to be tracking down keys from the copper and early modern ages. If you're a collector, find a nice copy to add to your collection. If you're an investor, focus on buying as high of grade slabbed copies as your budget allows. The best gains will be realized in 9.8 copies, but 9.2 plus slabs should still garner solid increases as well. The gains are already moving in on many books from this era, so don't drag your feet. I hope you all enjoyed today's list. If you got value from today's video, please be sure to hit the like button. And if you haven't yet subscribed, click subscribe and ring the notification bell so that you never miss a new upload. Happy hunting out there and don't forget to collect responsibly. We will see you in the next video. Thank you.